Fundamentally, in, my, in patients with myeloid fibrosis, is one of the um, major issues that A, brings them to the attention of the physician initially, um, and this is often how patients are diagnosed. Um, and for those patients that are known to have myeloid fibrosis, this is a major um, symptom and a major effect on their quality of life. Uh, so for those patients that have um, massive splenomegaly, um, it affects their ability to eat. Um, they have early satiety. Um, it can have an effect on their blood counts, make them more cytopenic by pulling all the blood into the spleen. Um, and they also um, are uncomfortable, have abdominal pain, uh, potentially nausea, diarrhea, things like that. So obviously a major problem for patients with PV. So um, luckily these days we do have excellent uh, medications to help patients control splenomegaly and symptoms related to splenomegaly. And these are JAK inhibitors. Um, so we've had Roxalitinib now for many years and it has been shown to be very effective um, in controlling splenomegaly. Um, usually, um, the, there's some dose um, effect, so higher dose of roxalitinib is more likely to have a more of an effect on splenomegaly in these patients. Um, so typically anywhere from 10 to 15 milligrams um, twice a day of roxalitinib uh, will control, will cause decrease in the size of the spleen in most patients with fibrosis, which will result in improvement in their symptoms um, directly related to splenomegaly and other systemic symptoms as well, of course, um, will often allow them to be able to have uh, better nutritional status and potentially contributes to their overall quality of life improvement as well as potentially overall survival that is seen with roxalitinib. Um, so this is the one, the drug that we've had available the longest. Uh, we now also have fidratinib, of course, another JAK inhibitor, um, which is also effective as a frontline therapy and potentially as a second line agent after roxalitinib, whether it's due to intolerance or roxalitinib uh, failure. Um, also very effective in re reducing um, size of the spleen and uh, controlling the symptoms related to splenomegaly. And most recently, we also have pacritinib that was approved. Um, so pacritinib is specifically um, more useful in patients that have cytopenic myelofibrosis, meaning they have low blood counts. Uh, both fidratinib and roxalitinib can be difficult to dose for those patients that have low platelets, low hemoglobin, um, especially low platelets. And uh, pacritinib is an attractive option for these patients who have potentially platelets less than 58,000 um, and um, whose anemia may be more of a concern um, and who still have significant splenomegaly that's causing symptoms. So again, from using pacritinib, we would expect reduction in um, spleen size uh, without compromising platelet counts and, and hemoglobin to the same extent that uh, fidratinib and roxalitinib is. So so it's a nice potential option for those patients that have low blood counts.